to accelerate your career, earn a higher salary, and even help society. Bold statement, I know. I'm going to show you how, starting with a card trick. If I can welcome on stage a volunteer. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> now, if you can please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, my name is Noah. Thank you, Noah. Now, you are the eyes and the ears of the audience. Now, please, can you have a look at the deck? Just, just confirm to them it's not rigged. Give it a shuffle and then count out 21 cards. And please also show the camera now, just another. You can tell this wasn't rehearsed. <laughs> now, now, please count out 21 cards. As she counts out 21 cards, I'll tell you the story of how I got into magic. I'd like to say this was an amazing start. I sailed into being a successful magician. No, actually, in fact, it, it started with me losing my job in IT. Now, thank you for counting out cards. What I need you to do is select one card from the pack. Now, I'm going to turn that way so I can't see the card, but please show the audience and the two camera men and women. And please let me know when I can turn around again. While she's showing you the card, you all need to memorize this card. The key part here is that I actually did this in an interview. I asked the CTOs and the directors to do just what she's doing now. Let me know when you're happy for me to turn around. Otherwise, the rest of the show might be a little bit rubbish. <laughs> Perfect. Now, as I said, whatever happens, no matter how exciting my talk, please do not lose track of the card. As I lay the cards down, I'm going to tell you the story of how I introduced this into an interview. First of all, I, it got to, I've worked in Agile project management for a number of years. So I, I introduce it by saying, well, actually, rather than me tell you about how I manage Agile project, shall I show you? So please point to the pile the card is in, just to prove that the card is still there. Now, a key part to link to Agile project management is that if you manage a development team, you can actually use Agile cards. These cards are used for developers, developers to predict how long uh, a task might take. So an ace, or a one, might, might mean one point, which is 30 minutes, and three points, or a three, might mean three points, which is an hour and a half. You then give them out to the developers, everyone votes independently, and then you create the average to work out how, ta how long a task is going to take. Now, please point to the pile, but not the card. Now, during this process, the CTO or director might be looking at me like, I'm not sure if she's brilliant or if she's crazy. But they allowed me to carry on with the trick. So we got to the point where the person may have felt, well, she's not stolen the card yet. Where's the magic? So I'd say, OK, point to the pile just to prove it's still there. By this point, you should still be happy. The card is still very much in the pile or even in the deck. I put the deck back together. But now I'm going to put all the power onto you. I'm going to give you the magic. We're going to divide it into four piles, roughly the same, three, four, five, roughly about five cards. Could be give or take a few, but there's not that many cards to play with. So we've got about four piles now. Now I want you to pick any two piles. Those two? Great. So we can... Now this part, the CTO or director might be starting to look a bit stressed or concerned. Point to another pile. No longer the pressure wasn't on me, the pressure was on them. Point to another pile. Slowly, we're removing the piles. As I mentioned, I managed to line up eight interviews. And I did this in all of them. The key part here, we're now down to the final cards. Please point to a card. Now, the pressure is mounting. I bet the future of the career, the future of my MBA, all on this card. I'm not that stressed, actually, but maybe, this, <laughs> but maybe the CTO is. Please turn over the card. And please show it to the audience. Hey. Thank you. Thank you very much to my volunteer. Thank you. Now, as we move through the slides, another magic trick. I need a clicker. So the trick worked a treat. I was able to demonstrate to the eight interviewers my powers of innovation, but what it actually helped me show was the, work out was the, the different reactions. We just had our volunteer who said they really wanted to know how it was done. I found that there were six reactions to this trick. They ranged from loving it, not wanting to know how it was done, wanting to know how it was done, 
not really caring, to pretending they knew how it was done. And when I offered to explain it, they said, I already know. But then when I asked them, they didn't seem to know how. Then the other person actually knew how the trick was done. I'd offered to change the trick and we'd do a different one. And the final one, they hated it. They were like, why have you shown me this? As I mentioned, I got six offers out of the eight. They actually all fell into these different reactions. But the one group I didn't want to work for were the people who basically wouldn't admit they didn't know how it was done. Now, the reason for this is I strongly believe in mentoring and reverse mentoring. If someone's not willing to admit when they don't know something, how can they ever possibly learn? The other benefit of the card tricks is that they, taught, they enabled me to demonstrate emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is made up of five key areas. These range from self-awareness to empathy. In the card trick, I was able to demonstrate all five and equally see the emotional intelligence of the interviewer at the same time. The benefits of emotional intelligence range from entrepreneurs being able to demonstrate that they're emotionally resilient, innovative, and have an advantage in developing products. They're also great negotiators, so this is a perfect skill set for someone in an interview. You've also seen examples where sales agents have earned nearly 70K more, given the example of L'Oreal, compared to those who are less emotionally intelligent. But how does this link to AI? Now, for the people who fall into the reaction one, which is they don't want to know how magic is done, just temporarily put your fingers in your ears. Now, for those who don't mind hearing it, there was an algorithm behind that trick. If you carry on listening, I will tell you more at the end. But the second part was as, emotion, as AI begins to rise, we now need to be more emotionally aware. That's not just because we need to be able to interact with humans, but so we can design AI systems to cater for our needs. Let me give you just one example. This is Amelia. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into Amelia's brain. Amelia has a mixture of episodic memory, neuroontology, process ontology, and EQ ontology. I know this is many, many words, but to simplify it, episodic memory and process ontology are a bit like long-term memory. You have set processes which enable her to move between uh, tasks and even switch contexts or, or subject matter. Neuroontology, which I'll demonstrate today, is a little bit like short-term memory. She's able to take a piece of information, understand it, and even answer questions on it. EQ ontology is arguably her emotional intelligence, and neuroontology and emotional ontology, emotional ontology are the areas I want to demonstrate today. This is Amelia. Hi, Sarah Wrench. She just said, hey. Sadly, I'm actually going to put her on mute so she won't be happy. So when I ask her how she is, she's only OK because I told her I'm putting her on mute. I'm now going to demonstrate the neuroontology. I'm going to take a paragraph from the TED talk and then copy it into her system. She's then going to process this, or similar to a human, take the information on board, maybe to her short-term or even her long-term memory. Here you can see the paragraph or the information is broken down into a number of words, sentences, and she's trying to understand the intent. To test she's understood it, I'm going to ask her, what, what does TED mean? What she's done behind the scenes is assigned numerical values to each word so that when I ask her the question, she's able to use machine learning and natural language processing to give the answer. In this case, she managed to successfully get the answer to what is TED correct. I guess the benefit of Amelia is not only can she be deployed in various different industries, she's now actually able to start understanding human language. But as a strong advocate of emotional intelligence, I actually want to talk about the emotional model behind the scenes. In, according to James Russell and Albert Morabian, emotional behavior is divided into three key areas, pleasure, arousal, and dominance. Now, some of you might be wondering where I'm going with this talk, but if you give me one second to demonstrate, I'll show you how. If I was to say something to Amelia like, I love you, or I hate you, let's start with that. She's probably not going to be that happy. If you think about someone saying I hate you to them, there's a really, really strong emotion. And here you can see it spikes on the arousal and also the displeasure, the opposite of the pleasure spectrum. Bearing in mind, this is not just, it's not important for her to not just understand what I've said, but also react accordingly. So you can see in her facial expressions, she's looking slightly saddened. If I then turn around and go, hey, Amelia, I love you, you can then see it spikes on the pleasure and then also the kind of non-aroused because it's, she's more content. You've also seen that she smiled and is slightly happier because I'm not telling her I'm being, not being mean to her. If we think about the power of, of agents being more emotionally intelligent, they can then be deployed in various different industries and used across the board. But you might be thinking, but I'm not a robot. Why do I care? Well, 
You can develop your own emotional intelligence, and I'm going to tell you how. You can do this through your mates. Who are your mates? Well, your mates are people who you spend every day with. They can be the people you see at work, your friends, or even people you meet through networking. All the people on this screen have enabled me to learn more about mathematics, to science, to even just develop my abilities in coding. Take one example just in the top left. My friend Daryl Grissett Dow, who is, a, is, who is a STEM ambassador for the British Science Association. She's often encouraging people to get involved, more involved in science and other collaborative uh, networking events. Take my colleagues at IPSoft, where we demonstrated to uh, a girls in STEM event the, the power of Amelia, trying to encourage young girls to, to stay in science and carrying it on. You then have my colleagues at Developer, who I work at putting on mentoring and networking events. The power of these can be seen in just this image. 50 women and 50 mentors, went, mentees and mentors, went to Downing Street. And this is actually the second time. First I went as a mentee, and then the second time I went as a mentor. I hope these, these brief demonstrations show how you can get involved, whether signing up to a networking event, something like de Developer, or even the British Science Association. One of my favorite quotes is, if you are scientifically literate, the world looks very different to you, and that understanding and knowledge empowers you. I've abbreviated <coughs> the quote here, but as we see a rise in AI, it's important for not, us, not only for us to understand the mechanics, but also the psychology of human nature behind it, to therefore use technology to benefit not just us as individuals, but society as well. My final comment, because I know there's many people who already work in the AI space, is thinking about how we can use it to support society and using artificial, artificial intelligence for social good. Here, just giving one example, Amelia was recently used by Croydon Council to help employees find out more about volunteering schemes, arguably not just benefiting their employees, but society more broadly. There's a whole range of applications of AI, and some will be even discussed today. But my key takeaway for you is that if you want to get involved, you've got plenty of different options online to do so, and I strongly encourage you to. But the last point is, but you haven't shown me how to do the card trick. Well, as I'm now an apprentice in the Magic Circle, officially I'm not meant to. But for those who want to, I will upload a link online, and you can Google Sarah Wrench and find it. For those, some of you may just want to leave thinking about the wonder and magic of AI and how you can use it in society more broadly. Thank you.